Right, I'm here to talk about your Plasma desktop. Quick recap for everyone who doesn't know which window has focus. Okay. Ah, it's upside down. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is a Plasma desktop? You presumably everyone in this room has seen it. It's this. It's the desktop and the panels and your widgets and everything visible. It's everything to manage your windows about, your applications, and also everything to configure your system from, from your hardware. And there's a lot of background services, so all your different keyboard layouts, configuring every possible setting. And we're known for having a lot of possible settings. So all of your system configuration. And also in Plasma, there are a lot of background services that you don't really know about, but take for granted, making sure when you close the lid, your computer suspends, making sure when you press the volume up, your volume goes up. And it's these little things that make quite a bit of a difference. And in terms of code, it's probably, it's a roughly evenly split between each of these four components. Although, oh, for goodness sake, known people are here to infect our talk. Um, background services. And equally large size of our code is all of this style and integration. We have styles and integration for not just Qt5 and our applications, but also backporting out to Qt4, backporting out to GTK2, GTK3. And also, if you look for your code, we support TK. We export all of the colors used as X resources databases. So TK applications will have some level of style and integration. I don't know how much that's used, but we try and integrate into absolutely everything under the sun to get a consistent experience. So overall, Plasma is everything that puts you in between a black screen and any application, no matter where it is, and being able to use your applications. That's the summary of Plasma. So last year, I stood on a stage very much like this one, but not this one. That would be amazing photography. Um, and I talked about three things. I talked about how a desktop is still relevant, because there's a lot of hype about mobiles last year. And I talked how Linux is still relevant on a desktop, and how Plasma is in a good state, but the potential is bigger than what we currently have. We can improve a little bit to reach our full potential that we have available. So. What's changed in the past year, in the past 12 months? That's what I just said. Desktop usage. I managed to find a new slide, updated, now including 2015, shows how many hours are spent using a desktop every day. And with our new entry, it's exactly the same as the year before. There's no real sign of it waving. If anything, it peaked in 2011, but that's just an abnormal blip. Your desktop isn't going away. There's no signs of it going away if you look at stats. If you look at percentages, yes, it is. But that's only because people are spending more and more and more time on mobiles, not that they're spending less time on desktops. So Plasma as a desktop, still relevant. And in terms of Linux market share, fancy quote taken from Slashdot, because Slashdot are all over loving KD and Linux. Um, Linux desktop now accounts for 2.48% of everything in June. And that's not including Chromebook. Did quite a lot of research and checking out. Chromebooks don't identify themselves as Linux for some reason. So Linux overall has increased. Over the past 12 months, this was roughly 1.9%. Now it's steadily nearly 2.5% of all users. And in terms of absolute users, that's millions. Any company would be pleased to have that many users. Obviously, that's not all Plasma. It's probably 99% or so. <laughs> Yes. This is time spent in hours um, right. on a computer. Blue is desktop, green is mobile. Yellow is who knows. Probably those weird kiosks you find in shopping centers. <laughs> but desktop, still relevant. Linux on your desktop, still relevant. So what's changed in Plasma over the years? And this is a nice montage of all the different wallpapers we've had which is the main reason these slides are here. So we wrote the main K menu. That got completely rewritten. 
the visual theme got refreshed, um, we restored the super old legacy icons, and we had four brand new applets arrive in the Plasma 5.5 release. Um, one to show how much disk space is used if you have quotas enabled on your system. Thanks, Dominic. Uh, a color picker for quickly finding what colors use in the awesome background. Um, being able to switch between users. And also being able to switch between activities quicker. A lot of things improving your workflow. And of course, work on Wayland support. So what happened in 5.6? Uh, more improved workflow. Again, that's really our target because we're trying to put you to your apps as fast as possible. So your task manager gains some features. It shows progress in your task manager, so you don't have to open the application to find out it's not finished yet. And you don't need to open your media player just to go onto your next track if you've got it on random and it starts playing Britney Spears in a loop. Or you can go back and listen to it all again. And there's work on Braylon support. That happened in 5.6, continued. And we had a new applet. Um, the weather applet got restored. So we're back to pretty much most of the old applets we had, plus new stuff. Plasma 5.7 continued rewriting everything. The task manager backend got completely rewritten. Task manager being the bit that's normally at the bottom by default shows which applications you have. The system tray, that backend got rewritten. And we improved your workflow. If you know KRunner, Zoom, everyone does. You type and it shows you search results. So you can type anything, you get results. And that got improved your workflow so you can jump directly into a specific act activity within an application. Oh, and there's some work on Wayland support. That continued. So, 5.8. It's got a rewritten backend for your pager. There's lots of rewriting. Most of our legacy code from Plasma 4, once you know what you want the code to actually do, then you can go back and rewrite it. And that's something we found on Plasma, is things are built up with adding new features, and it comes a point where you have to say, oh, now we know what we want, we can redo it again. And this time, basing it directly on knowing we'll be in queue quick, and we'll be knowing we've had these features. I've got new things for if you switch between different themes, you can change the layout of your desktop. and. Oh, there's some work on some Wayland support. So your general themes over the past 12 months, because we've had those four releases, we've had three releases, 5.8 is just about to come out, because Academy is at a slightly different time. There's been no dramatic changes. We haven't had Qt6. Um, and there's been this continued iterative improvement, so everything's always getting slightly better, but not getting worse which is always a good combo. And it was improved Wayland support. So, coming up next, 5.8 is an interesting twist on it. Now we're going to have long-term support. So instead of just having three months of patches, it's now going to have 12 months of patches. 18, I wasn't sure. <laughs> At least 12 months of patches. <laughs> um, well, 12 months of patches, 18 months of support. And we'll see how it goes. I mean, it's something that we've not really tried before. Even in Plasma 4 days, when we were dealing with six months release cycles, that was not as long as this. This is twice or three times the size of that. So that's going to be an interesting challenge, but it also brings in new opportunities because we, find, we found one of our particular distributors, and I think you're going to find in Munich that you want more in three months of support because you don't want to grow of upgrading every three months. And it's really a sign of maturity that we're now able to say, we can offer 18 months of support and not get too stressed about it. Well, if we did that for pl early versions of Plasma, I don't think any of us would have been as excited. We would have missed out on a lot of Wayland support. Um, but Wayland is not part of the Plasma 5.8. L, uh, long term, oh, LTS long term support. 18 months being long. <laughs> so, with any slide presentation, it's always good to throw in some stats because it shows I've done some research. In the last 12 months, 194,000 lines have changed, which is quite a lot. Over 8,000 commits which, again, so quite a lot. It averages out, if my maths are correct, 26 a day. Is that maths 
Uh, yeah. But including anything that was in a branch and then merge into master. Yeah. Yeah. Anything that yeah. yeah. Git short log, basically, um, on the master branch. And this is something I think is quite encouraging. There's 146 different contributors uh, in all of the Plasma Works modules, which in the past year, in the past year yes, only last last 12 months. But it does include Scripty, which is a bot. So, <laughs> but Scripty is one of our best developers. <laughs> so that's an encouraging sign. It shows Plasma is alive, and it shows 145 different people were able to set up Plasma in a development build and start contributing changes. And that's probably the biggest challenge we have in Plasma is the setup to begin contributing. So it's not a bad state. Own Cloud in its peak was around 300, but then there are other projects which are successful and they have considerably less. So it's not, could be better, but definitely not bad. Not bad at all. 1,082 bugs marked as resolved fixed. So we, we've actually made a change to close something. We haven't just said, I don't care about your problem. We've made a change and fixed 1,082 bugs, which is pretty encouraging, because I don't think we've introduced anywhere near 1,082 bugs. And overall, we've closed just over 3,000. That's including solving people's problems without a code commit maybe pointing them in the right direction, or it being a duplicate, or in some cases, disagreeing with the user. But it's still a net increase, but it shows generally things are going quite well. So I want to talk a bit about what makes writing a desktop hard, because we see quite a lot, particularly over the last couple of years, of new desktops coming along, and we're going to be a great new desktop. Why is it hard to write a desktop? Well, you have integration with completely different distinct components. If you write an email client, you're going to be an expert in IMAP and maybe SMTP. Not a lot of things. To write Plasma, we need experts in Pulse Audio. We need experts in SystemD. We need experts in spell checking for your word completely. <laughs> And, and spell checking. And again, you have all of these different layers that come in and require different skills, from proofreading to uh, reviewing. To reviewing uh, but, but also all of these different libraries. And the problem of the more things you depend on is this big chain from any graphic driver to your spell checking libraries. And we have an abstraction layer over three different ones, or in my case, none. Uh, we have all of these different things. And if any one of them fails, Plasma seems like it sucks. So we need people with a wide variety of skills, and that's hard to get. So as more external dependencies, both explicitly and implicitly, and most other pieces of software. And that makes writing a desktop hard. And I want to tell a story of something that happened over the last 12 months. We have this ridiculously old legacy support for many, many systems. One example is X session management. And X session management is a thing that restores your applications after you shut down and come back in. It was an old protocol that we dropped from client side at the start of KDE 2. It's so old that it was predates the Spice Girls. It's, <laughs> it's a point of reference for most things. And we don't need it anymore. There's no way we need that bit of code. So we dropped it because it was a cleanup. And in theory, any application should better speak a new language, which was we support. One month later, we ended up putting it back because applications still used it, and we got reports on it. And that's something nearly 10, 15 years old that we still have to support. At the same time, we have all these constant new things to support. SystemD decided to change its behavior of what happens when you close a lid. Previously, Plasma handled it. It was Plasma's job, and Plasma could check a configuration option and decide, oh, I'll shut down, or, oh, the users said they wanted to stay open. But we have a new code of path that's decided, no, I know best. And in fact, it's true of most of the new systemd, logindy, and we've got new graphic changes. We have the Wayland support. We have 
in new things, and we have this legacy old things. And that just means we're continually growing and growing and growing. And that makes it also very hard for a brand new desktop to try and catch up. So Dave's definitely correct opinions on the future. So it used to be a rule of thumb in computing that every, I don't want to say how many months now. See, I thought it was 12. And every 18 months, the speed of a computer would double. And that lasted true for ages. That's kind of stopped now, particularly on the desktop side, and it's gone backwards. Now we have this demand for this particular computer here was given away free on a magazine in the UK. Not an increased price of a magazine, it was free on the front of a magazine, a computer. And that's now almost a standard, and it's not faster. It, users aren't getting faster and faster hardware, they're getting cheaper hardware and expecting our software to run on it. So our normal expectations of we can use these new things, we can keep increasing in memory and RAM because computers allow it, we're actually going backwards. And if anything, we're now trying to support computers with less resources than we were a couple of years ago, which is interesting. And Android desktop is definitely coming. We know that's coming in a couple of years. What impact is that going to have on Plasma? Is that going to take away some of our users? Personally, I don't think it will. I mean, I wrote, wrote some software to be run up Android applications on a desktop, and really, there wasn't much demand because anything with an Android application also has a really good website, which normally works better. And I think it's going to take away users who would otherwise switch to Chromebooks, taking away your Windows users, because we kind of have a market of nerds. I don't think that's changing. But it's something to be wary of. It's going to change change the shape of desktops over the next few years. And one thing that's big to talk about is a Slashdot article recently, KDE is dying. And that's not true in terms of your community. We've just shown Plasma's doing quite well. But we've had the marketing changes. There is no KDE anymore. We have a distinct Plasma, we have the applications, and we have the frameworks, and they're pushing in different directions. And this is good. If I wrote an application, I would want to try and reach as many people as possible. It makes sense. However, it changes the way we do things in KDE now. If we had a new idea for crazy tech, like activities to some extent, or Kyo, if we a remote file system, we can't do that at a KDE level anymore and then just change this entire suite of applications to match. For two reasons, partly because our applications want lowest common denominator to run everywhere, and partly because our Plasma users, a lot of the applications they use now are now in the web. It's not a KDE application for doing every single task, even playing music, you do it in the web now. A lot of people, a lot of tasks, straight into the web. And we have limited control over your two big web giants, Firefox and Chromium. And that changes the way we do things in Plasma. It means we have to target slightly lower levels. We're seeing out now, Phonon did some change, crazy ideas of how sound gets rooted, and we did that at a library level. Now, what we saw in 5.7, 5.8, we're improving our, talking to Pulse Audio, which is at a slightly lower level beneath KDE, and we're, Plasma's improving our integration there. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It improves the desktop homogeneity, our uh, desktop talk behaving similarly. But it's a change that we're having in Plasma. So, wrapping up, conclusions. The desktop is still relevant. Linux is still relevant on the desktop. And Plasma is in a good state. Over the last 12 months, we've seen very encouraging changes. We've seen a good amount of con contribution. Things are heading in a generally positive direction. But it still has more potential than we're currently reaching. Yes. Oh, and there's a little microphone somewhere. In case I can't hear you. Or you don't want to. So what do you think we, we should focus on at a high level? Dropping, not dropping things? <laughs> Sorry, Ken didn't see it. Okay. Um, 
focusing on a high level, I think there's been a theme, particularly stuff Kai has done, on getting you to your applications. I think that's very important. All your jump action changes. I think that's very important, and that's very good. And one of the things I think we'll see, one of my favorite applications that I use is something called Novolova Player. And what it is, is a web view. But it, by default, loads either Spotify or Google Play Music or Deezer, and it has a very, very tiny bit of JavaScript that turns Empress into irrelevant changes on your desktop. So all of the Plasma functionality, all of our application integration, still works even though it's a web client. And I think that's something that, over the next few years, something we might see in various other applications. It's something that we can control, and it allows Plasma to be useful to people because it's getting them to their content, even in, no matter what platform it is, because we used to do that. We used to get people to their content even if it's on GTK. We need to focus on getting people to their content even if it's on your web. And our bookmark handling code in the start menu and runners, that hasn't changed in 10 years. And there must be room for improvement now. Still the uh, data integration between the desktop or the workspace and the applications. <coughs> um, Agree, we can do a lot better there. So I, I think the, everything around that is, it works pretty well. Yep. We can do more to poke into, into applications. And um, I think with the window metadata um, work we started on, or um, the dynamic window decorations, as some people uh, here may know, it can actually play, play a bit, pretty big role in there. It can, yeah. Mm. Two questions. Uh, I think the mic. Oh, yeah. Now it's working. Um, first question: Was that presented on Valent? No. <laughs> <laughs> Second question: Did the bug numbers include the recent bug closing sessions I did? Uh, no. Then every number are um, probably one hundred up. <laughs> okay, Martin wants to show off how good he is. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah. Ken's got a question. I don't know how long I've got. Okay. If you had like a million dollars and you could just pump it into a few things on Plasma, what would you have people focus on? Well, swimming pool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, it's, it's a tough question. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. Auditing of our code is important. I mean, as we, we're going to see, Wayland allows applications to be sandboxed. However, that's only as good as the surrounding software. It doesn't do anything by itself. It requires our software to match. And it's not just the Wayland parts, it's because as Wayland is secure, we can no longer use the excuse that our X is insecure, we can't do anything. And we're going to see the weakest component gets shifted about because the weakest component is not X, okay? That means the weakest component is now this, which means the weakest component. After we fix that, there'll be a new weakest component. And I mean security auditing. And security auditing is, requires expertise that is new, and it's not a very fun, sexy task. Anyone else? I have a question from the perspective of the company I'm working for. So we, we have a lot of Linux users. Actually, almost everybody in the company is using Linux. We are probably one of the few bigger companies where uh, everybody, including salespeople and management and so on, are using Linux desktops. I like to think my company probably has the same. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> What I'm saying is we have a lot of enthusiastic uh, Linux users um, and we also have a lot of enthusiastic KDE users. What I've seen over the last couple of years is that actually people have switched away from KDE. And what I hear is the number one reason for that was uh, almost always stability. It was never lack of integration with the web or lack of new features or lack of whatever. It was mostly about I, I updated and something stopped working so I switched to something else, whatever it is. So my question would be on what position is stability in the list of the priorities of the Plasma team? I mean, 
as a team, there's obviously lots of different people from lots of different influences, so I can't speak on behalf of everyone. I'm not going to tell our contributors, stop working on new features because we want to do this. Personally, I mostly do bug fixing instead of any new features, partly because that's part of my employment, is working on making sure my boss's distribution is awesome. Everyone should use Netrunner, no offense. And um, <laughs> so within that, it's something I strongly feel about. And we've got a Plasma LTS, which obviously you guys influenced. And that's going to help, I think, improve our perception. So I'd like to think we're working on it. Obviously, we'll only see how it acts in a couple of years. But also, we are losing communication between the different aspects between frameworks and Plasma and applications, and that can be difficult. Yes? Um, an important aspect is that we, um, that's actually only been going on for about half a year now, that we have very, very recent builds um, for both open source, but uh, also based on Eon. And um, for me as a developer, that makes a big difference because I don't have to wait until it's too late. Um, to get feedback, um, I can get it the next day after I fix something. Um, I can't stress how important that is uh, to me because our software distribution um, mechanisms, they suck so badly that <clears throat> imagine uh, a user installs a half-year-old uh, release of OpenSUSE. We uh, get feedback. Um, okay, it's a, uh, it's a version which let's say 4.7.4. Um, so we got one more chance to actually put a patch in a stable branch, which is still never going to be shipped by OpenSUSE. So um, that's not helpful for us. So either we need to get the distributions to ship uh, at least our stable updates, um, or preferably um, even more updates, um, but we need to improve our stability and quality and regression. Um, uh, problems for that, or we need to be better with testing that beforehand. And the truth is probably uh, somewhere in between, but uh, from my point of view, I can say that it, it helps a lot uh, to have daily builds and people I can actually um, point to something concrete they can test and not say, yeah, I'm, I've committed a patch, and the next time we talk about that is in eight months. So I, I guess that's going to have an impact. Or 18 years. Can I interrupt for a second? Because I'm on a stage. It's still nothing, and <laughs> but it's it's also six times longer than uh, what we did so far in five seconds. So right. we're getting we're getting a lot closer. We do have a plasma buff starting on Monday in the morning, and you can find that on the academy website. <laughs> <laughs> so I also want to just answer the question from a Quinn perspective. So um, one would expect that, for example, all this Wayland work goes into, well, the code quality goes down, but the opposite of the case, because we are now able to auto-test what we were never able to do before. And I've built up a test coverage of the Quinn core of now about 50%, probably higher, because buildkde.org cannot test everything yet. And that's just... It changes so much if you are able to, oh, I have this weird condition. If this window has this X property and that one set, then this code path is taken. And now I can simulate everything. And so the quality goes up thanks to Wayland for X and it's, it's, on X. And it's uh, not just uh, in the Because we, we could never reliably start a full featured um, X server on um, in an auto test situation, and now we're we're doing it all the time. I actually do it five five times in the same auto test. 
Um, so yeah, it's. Yeah. I just want to um, reply also to you. So from uh, Blue Systems perspective, this is the number one priority. Uh, I always tell uh, the employees working on Plasma, Plasma desktop, the parts, that we have to stabilize uh, the things that are there first before we introduce new things that are half-baked. And uh, this is not uh, because of Netrunner. Netrunner is the highest upstream, but uh, it goes for Debian, Ubuntu, Neon, all the stacks in between. So uh, I always... I'm very uh, glad when people report that they have a uh, much more stable uh, version on SUSE or on Chaos, Manjaro, wherever Plasma is used. Uh, so this is the most important from a Blue Systems perspective. Okay, uh, mine was just a very quick uh, remark. Um, again, uh, um, about the uh, st uh, stability issue and the perceived quality problems. Um, one um, what one of the problems that uh, often happens is is not of, of course uh, not the only one, but um, there are also problems um, beyond our our side also on, on lower levels of stack. It could uh, maybe drivers, maybe X11, maybe Qt, but um, are things like this one that we are uh, in this moment. Uh, conference like that, that we are uh, all together, that we can uh, um, uh, we can sit together also with the with the people that you usually don't see that are overseeing uh, those lower aspects and see what we do improve. So if yeah, if uh, anybody has uh, some issues, it's those are the proper days for to be addressed. Okay, thank you. Uh, more questions? No, that's it, okay.